So if we're going to design stuff in Blender to be 3D printed, I'm going to need to set up like a virtual scale environment. So this is like the uh, sheet that the filament gets printed on. There may be some people watching this going, don't get your fingerprints on it because of all the oils. I, I know how to clean it, it's fine. And I've got a backup one. So I've looked up the general scale, but the thing is when I export from Blender and take models into Prusa Slicer, there's often a warning about scale conversions. And I saw a post from someone recommending to put the, uh, the unit measurement onto millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a board in here, like a simple plane at the size of the print sheet make something then export it to the Prusa slicer software which is this where you like you prep your models and stuff and then see if it comes up with any warning so in theory if I well, we'll start with a plane seems sensible enough actually where's the center of the world there it is plane and it should be 365 by 365 so this should technically be the scale of the print sheet which is obviously way off scale from my you know default lighting setup and such. So if I get rid of that, let's bring a cube down. Let's add a bevel modifier quickly, bring it into contact with the floor plate and then make those uh, sides smooth. Then if I can literally rescale everything else, cause it'd be quite nice to keep, you know, a fancy lighting setup while trying to preview stuff for the printer. Obviously the values or the lights are too strong now. Let's just uh, grab some of those values. So really, I'm just focused on trying to get the print board set up in a way that's sensible, where I feel like I can actually start concepting things. Now, it'd be nice to have some kind of like measurement marker on it, but I think to start with, I just need to test the importing. So I've got a cube, but let's make some changes. Let me duplicate and move one away. Make sure the scale is applied, of course. That's going to mess up the modifiers. I forgot to do that earlier. There you go. So a two millimeter bevel. And now let's just make like a little dent or an impression in it like that. Actually, this would be interesting. If I make two copies of this and if I move one to the side, so we're going to do a bit like a puzzle piece. So I select both of them. One of them is going to go down, I don't know how far, let's say, put it down to maybe, no, that's too high, seven millimeters. That doesn't really seem high enough, 17. I can't be bothered to do the calculations. So I'm just going to eyeball it like that. So they should fit together. Now, obviously, depending on how like the filament prints, it may get in the way, but that will be our test. So we've got like a miniature puzzle piece. And let me copy the Z value there so those are consistent. Okay, so I've got both of them selected. File, export, STL, selection only, puzzle test. And let's keep everything the same, apply the modifiers. So just as a quick test when importing the STL, what does the warning say? The dimensions of the object from the file seem to be find in meters the internal unit measurement is millimeter so if i say no they're going to be micro scale is that them down there so if i said yes this is what i'm trying to figure out because i've set it to millimeters in blender but does that actually mean anything in the file when it's done here or is that kind of defined somewhere else so if i pressed yes and that looks like a more sensible scale so do i just assume that i press yes every time and will that be like right? Will that be the correct scale? So let me take a note here. What size are these? A 26 by 2 millimeters. So if I keep that in mind, 26 by 2. So when they come out of the printer, if I measure them manually, I'll be, I'll be able to see like whether that size is consistent. Not sure if I need a uh, wipe tower for this, if I just do one material. So let's disable wipe tower and slice now, see if it gives us warnings. No layers were detected. Is that because I got two like separate things? Let's try doing individual exports as well, just in case. So STL, cube one, cube two, scene unit. Is that apply current scenes unit? Oh, I might need to do that. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind for the future. Let's restart this. Okay, so if I press slice now on just one of the objects, that works out fine. Can I undo that? Am I allowed to import more than one object then? If I select both at the same time, yes and yes, multiple objects. Should I consider these as a single object? Yes, but in this case, now they can't be seen. What if I press slice now? Now they're there. Okay, interesting, bit confusing. Print settings, multiple extruders, disable the wipe tower. Can I move them closer to the center? So their positions, when they were imported, originally they were in the center, but this time they were imported over there. I suppose it doesn't really matter as long as it gets printed fine. So if I press slice now, now that works. Okay, interesting. What you're watching, by the way, is me learning as I go, because I didn't figure this out yet. Export G-code, cubes to print. Exporting G code. Yep. All right, let's get it moved over to the USB because for now I'm just using the USB to move the print files. So cubes to print as we moved over to the single tool, tool folder. Let's go and take a look. All right, am I supposed to plug this in before or after? I can't remember, but I'll let it turn on first. Okay. So we got print, single tool, cubes to print. Let me see the preview. And at the moment I've got the Galaxy Filament in Toolhead 1. That's a problematic one, but if I'm right, I've got the fan check turned off. 
Hang on. Yeah, disabled, because there was a recent problem with that as well. But let's give it, try 49 minutes. Go here, because they're probably going to be a little bit chunky now. So that's something I need to keep in mind. Ignore the firmware. That's fine. Okay, so we'll let that have its go. And I might end up with some moderately sized puzzle cubes. How much is 26 millimeters? Hang on. Like 26 isn't that big, so I wonder why it will take so long. 40 something minutes? You can see some of the Shafti uh, models done here as well. And one where the fan failed part of the way through before I disabled the check. You can also tune it while it's in progress so you can change the speed and also run in a stealth mode as well. But we'll leave that as it is for now. So it's warming up the hotbed there and it should be warming up the hot ends as well soon. And then we'll be able to see what happens. Just gonna do a quick fan check. I can see that, that one is spinning. And usually that one starts spinning when it's actually starting to use the, uh, the hot end to paste out the filament. So right now it's just doing the absorbing heat phase. It takes a little while, but you'll see the uh, hot end reduced there. So the bed is already up to heat at the moment, 60 degrees. A nice toasty thing to touch. And yes, I can see the shadow of previous prints. Don't worry, I'll get better with the whole like purifying the board process. I did give it a wipe down as well. All right, now it seems to be probing the different locations on the board. It does that just to make sure it's there. Oh, it says nozzle cleaning, but it does this probing. See, now it says probing point one. And I think that is just to make sure that there is actually something there so the print doesn't just disappear or go straight into the uh, warming section of the bed. I'm starting to wonder if the reason why it was projected to take 40 something minutes is because the scale might actually be wrong, but that's what we're learning. We're gonna see what it actually comes out like. Who knows, maybe it'll be like 260 rather than 26. I guess we'll find out. Okay, I took a step away and came back to find the poop. So <laughs> if you don't know, the um, the next druders, they release a little bit of material just to purge the uh, hot ends and they kind of like wipe it on the edge here. I call it the poop, it's very funny. So let's put that with the rest of the material. This is like 3D printer only fans. Oh, there we go. So now it's actually starting. And I don't have a wipe tower, which means it's just gonna go straight into the printing. So we can actually see the size of the cubes there. So in theory, after it's done the first layer for this one, it should move on to the neighboring cube as well because they were combined into one object. Now I won't do this, but I'm always tempted to stick a ruler in there immediately and measure the size of the edge. Okay, now why did that stop after the first layer? That is not supposed to happen. So it's grabbing the next tool head. Oh, what? I didn't realize. I thought they were going to be the same material, but I guess not. That's interesting. So I must have skipped. I must have just not paid attention. But then again, it took it a while to swap to the next tool head. So hopefully it's a bit faster with that. And then if we check the other side. Oh, the fan is not running there. That's a problem. Okay, now it is. So that fan kind of goes back and forth from being on. So we need to keep an eye on that. Okay, so you left it a while. So now there's a bit of a uh, bubble there because we don't have a wipe tower. So I should have done a wipe tower if I knew that they were gonna be doing two different materials. It might be sensible for me to cancel this one then. Okay, progress update. I decided not to cancel the print because now that it's swapping between the tool heads pretty quickly, there is still a bubbling issue with the corners, but it's not as much of a problem. So I'm just gonna let it run the course and then see what it's like when it's done, just so we can get the scale measurement and check to see if everything was okay. All right, so I let the print run in the end and it worked, although the quality is terrible because like we said, I didn't realize it was actually doing a dual print, so I didn't have the wipe tower enabled, but here they are and they match together. So they're supposed to be 26 millimeters across. So from the side, yes, it does look like 26 to me, maybe 26 and a half or between 26 and 26 and a half is obviously the, uh, the width of the filament as well. Although from the base, it only looks about 25 or about 25 and a half. So which one is this? Yeah, the dent one. So it's close enough. I mean, looking at the values here, it's supposed to be 26.2. So it's actually a little bit lower than that, but I think it's tried to achieve that. And that's the important thing here. Actually from bottom to top, that's pretty good, pretty spot on. But what that basically means is we've got the scale right now. Although the question I have is whether I enable that uh, set unit thing on export. So if I go export STL, what was it? Scene unit, there we go. Whether that would prevent the error from occurring when loading things into Prusa Slicer. So I might actually just test that now. So if I take one of them, file export STL, cube one scene unit if i tick scene unit and export that 
Let's open Prusa Slicer. Import, STL, scene unit. Still comes up with the error. Okay, I don't, I don't suppose it matters too much anyway. Now we know that the size is pretty much right. So going back and forth on there looks about right, although the field of view is different. All right, so now we got the scale working. What next? Stabbing myself. So like I said, one of the main things I wanted to do was create a little tool to help me do self-lancing on the soft tissue between the spine and the shoulder blade. So at the moment I need to get someone else to help with that because capturing a blood drop this way is a bit tricky when you can't see your own back. So typically I have someone else there that does it and then holds up like a, I've got like a little sensor to do things like the blood sugar or uric acid or cholesterol readings, that type of thing. So I wanted to come up with a device that effectively suspends it. So it's kind of held in a place where you could dual hold it. So it would stabilize it. So it's sitting in there and then you use your, like your index finger to click on this so it's basically built around this unistic structure although there are other makes for lances but i want to i'm going to base it on unistic so something that surrounds this so you can have your index finger ready to press the uh the disposable launch button it's like a one press thing so it'd be easy to hold there and then the idea would be that somehow this plastic housing for the actual lance could then be retracted so if that's done manually that's fine retracted from the base and then let's assume that under here this is where you've lost the skin. So after it's been retracted, so it doesn't disrupt the blood flow, then we have a tiny well that may effectively be slightly protruding into the skin. And then from there, it can collect the drop. So let's say you could calculate how long that would take relatively, say you're just there for like 60 seconds or something. Then once that's collected, we can just bring it forward and then apply that from the well to any kind of testing device. The thing about capillary capture is that it's quite difficult to predict what the flow will be like. So this is like one of the largest lances that Unistick do. Every time they've been used on my back so far, I haven't felt a thing and they've been more effective than other types of lances, even like for finger stuff for me. So yeah, this is just like psychologically less intimidating. So really, maybe I can just do like a quick sketch to demonstrate. I'm not like modeling the actual thing here and now, but let's just move these things to the side. So let's say how big is the Unistick? That is about 50 millimeters, 50 millimeter by 10, by about 10 again, but maybe 15, including the trigger point. So let's say Y axis 50 and then X 10 and the other 10. So it's quite easy when you're working with like the dimension level there to get stuff down to size already. So we have this, let me put the cursor there. Probably be easier just to Boolean things out, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. So we'd have a top piece for which the lance could protrude out slightly to the skin because on the end of the lance, there are these plastic points that which touch the skin with the idea being that they're providing like this confusing sensory pre-prick feeling to the skin. This is like one of the innovations of Unistick in a way to try and reduce the sensation of pain. So you have the lance that's protruding here when it's triggered and then we want to be able to have it so we can slide back so that a well underneath can catch stuff so let's say there's another section down here and the well maybe it slightly protrudes in a way only very slightly so if we visualize skin hang on i will say this might not work but this is just like my idea my theory so when pushing a plastic thing into skin it's gonna buckle a bit like this do you know what i mean so imagine that your back is there oh this is like the soft tissue so we're pushing in this plastic housing which creates a bit of like a pressure point here the lance moves forward which then again kind of further squashes the skin a bit the lance will have let's put cursor to selected here and again this is just like a tiny sketch the lance probably has a range that comes out i don't know not too far but then around it there are all of these kind of like a uh, micro point cylinder things if i set the origin to 3d cursor ry90 so it's got all these little points on it so let's join that all up so that will move forward in the system and theoretically in the bottom bit here there's a well so we can sort that out but then protruding out the side of the actual lance object is the uh, like trigger point Let's model that slightly differently. So this is something that the index finger will come down on and then push in to trigger it before the lance can be slid backwards. So one way of doing this may be to have like a rail of some kind that we can put the lance into, but then we may need a covering to make sure that the top and bottom sections are connected. And then separately, I need to design a well. So the well will probably not be made out of filament. It'd be much more sensible to have it made out of glass or something like that, but I'm not sure how you would get the shape. So it would effectively, once the lance has been moved back, then what we want to do is we want to take advantage of this pressure point we're creating by pushing the plastic forward. So it would ideally be a curve that's kind of slanting down a bit into a well-like shape. So in a way, that would be something like, you know, if I dipped that in, but then if this was also raised a bit, actually, let me just reset that. Set some subdivisions here, proportional editing. 
something so something a bit like this do you see what i mean because we're effectively just like creating a little curve like a waterway almost not that there's going to be that much blood coming out but it's putting pressure on the skin to almost squeeze it while allowing for content to flow down so ideally there'd be like a little pocket here where stuff can accumulate the idea being that when you bring it forward you could almost like tilt it to get the blood back out of the well so you're kind of then almost pouring it onto like a test subject but again there may not be enough flow to actually allow even enough of a drop to happen so if there was enough content for a drop it would have to not be smeared out it would have to sit in a very rounded shape like a very rounded well to kind of preserve its integrity if that makes sense so with the idea of a rail it would suggest that oh, let's turn off proportional editing we would need something that could fit the uh 10 millimeter across with a bit of a buffer zone to the sides inside of it and then hopefully like ideally you have a wall that connects the top and the bottom pieces so that it's all kind of one piece overhangs may be a bit of a weird thing to do for the printer but i'm sure we'll figure it out the thing can also be made in two pieces and then like super glued together at like a connecting point so again like i don't know here in some way we may need a rail on the opposite side just to let it slide in obviously this topology is not correct because we're just sketching at the moment but in theory then things would have to be a bit more tightly packed around the large object so it kind of covers it a bit so we can only really move forwards and backwards the problem here then will be if we have a well that's tightly packed into where the contact point will be for the actual lance then it won't actually be able to get there so another solution is to have like the rail come out to a certain way but then have the well slightly further down or use a different type of lance or have a different mechanism that kind of helps to push it into place afterwards or like rotate upwards which would like pressure and squeeze the skin after it's been lanced there so this is something i'll think about and then i'll work on getting a little prototype made up that we uh can put this in and then see if it fits and stuff but yeah i guess i'll leave it there for now it's probably a weird one might get some judgmental thoughts about this one but it's all in the quest of trying to make it easier for me to do uh home testing i'm not suggesting this for anyone else this is like a private tool for me to use for myself so yeah i'll leave it there thanks for watching let me know if you made it to the end and i'll see you next time